The controversial infectious diseases bill. Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabiamila defends his stance. And the Nigerian police force is in the news again. This time, the Senate calls for its decentralization into 13 zonal commands. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, has defended his promotion of the control of infectious diseases bill, arguing that its content and timing was appropriate and was conceived in the best interests of the Nigerian people. The Speaker pledged that there will be a public hearing where Nigerians will be given the opportunity to contribute to the draft law. In stating its opinion on the bill, the Christian Association of Nigeria has urged the House to discontinue discussion on the proposed bill warning that it should not be passed into law in national interest. And joining us to discuss this is Dr. Dio Kayode, a political technocrat live in the studio. Thank you, doctor, for joining us. My pleasure being here again. And also via Skype, we have with us Williams Wallace, the president, African Development Goals Initiative via Skype. Thank you for joining us, Williams. Thank you. Thank you very much. And how are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing very well. Let's consider the proposed Control of Infectious Diseases Bill 2020 and how much it is a violation of Article 6 of the 2005 UNESCO Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights. Let's go with you, um, Williams. Yes. Well, it, it is a, a very fundamental human right that is being infringed. And if you notice that even in the United States now, they are calling for the arrest of uh, 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 Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. They're not pharmacists, they're not medical professionals. Um, why are they pushing through this agenda of, uh, uh, you know, of a vaccine? And then have a ready taker in the Speaker of the House trying to rush through surreptitiously the bill without public debate, one, uh, without the key uh, instigators of uh, implementation of any inf infectious diseases, NCDC. They said that they did not participate, nor they, were they a pally to uh, the passing or the attempt to pass such bill. Uh, how can you, uh, you, you know, on your own, just quickly uh, move to move a, a bill that has not been discussed publicly in the public domain, that also did not have the NCDC, Nigerian Center for Disease Control, instigated, for example. They should have been the one who brought it to the House and said, we'd like to do this, and they would have set out their framework as to what they wanted. And of course, they would have had the professionals involved, they would have had uh, the public involved. There are so many professionals who can tell you, well, let us look, for example, at Madagascar, with uh, their uh, organic uh, uh, solution. Let us look at Senegal with their test kits. And so many in Africa now has woken up and Africans are doing it for themselves by themselves. African solutions to African problems, which is what we're promoting, Africacy. So why in a place like Nigeria where we've had the least cases from among the world, do you want to rush a bill to uh, put in a vaccine that has not been uh, as yet tested, but somehow uh, someone like Bill Gates was able to, uh, five years ago, uh, put a patent out expecting a pandemic in uh, the year 2020 and ready to roll out vaccines to Africa, Nigeria being the key. Because if you hit Nigeria with 200 million people, then, uh, you know, the rest will follow like domino effect. And of course, what Bill Gates and they have always been doing uh, with the GS, uh, GMO uh, and Monsanto, etc., is to cl clearly buy favor with key decision makers in the uh, African continent. And of course, the Speaker of the House of Reps, which represents the people, is a key uh, <laughs> mover and shaker in Nigeria. So therefore, it makes sense if the conspiracy theories starts to point their fingers at him. 
All right. Let, let's, let, let's leave the conspiracy theories for now and say but a few things about this bill. Now, Dr. Uh, Dio, I, I need your take and maybe you want to react to a few things um, Mr. Williams just, just said. In relation to this bill right now, there, there seem to be some kind of hastiness to this bill. Let, let me take your thoughts on it. Yes. Um, there's no doubt about it. It is still that conspiracy theory that he mentioned. Exactly. Nothing yes. other than that. Because if you had followed uh, Bill Gates in the last five years, he had been talking about all these issues. All right, I've been reading a lot. Yeah, Doctor Dyer, but you know, on a very on a, on, a, on a platform like this, we can't we can't base our arguments and submissions on conspiracy theories, but on mere facts. The facts right now before us, the fact remains: the House of Representatives is seeking to pass this bill into law. So I need I need your it professional is, view it on it. It is where yes. I am still coming at. Yes. When you're talking of conspiracy theory, yeah. that does not mean that this is what Plus TV is saying. Mm. I'm talking from my own point of view. Do you understand? Yes. And the way I see it okay. is this bill that is being rushed, we can see, people can see some kind of primordial tendencies there based on antecedents. All right? Yes. Things that have been happening in the past. Bill Gates have been talking been about Bill Gates have been talking about this pandemic of 2020, five years ago. Yes. All right? Yes. Five years ago. So how, is he a medical doctor? Is he a scientist? No. 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 So that means some people have been working in the background on this. And it is now appalling and disappointing that our own representative, the Speaker of the House of Assembly, is now trying as much as possible to now bring into focus what they have been planning over five years ago to start in Nigeria to that extent, to that extent, abdicating the responsibility that we have handed over to him as our representative. Because, for goodness sake, why are you so much in a hurry to pass such a bill? that deals with people's health. Considering the fact that Nigeria is a member of UNESCO, and we are part of signatory to, to, to the Act of 2005. Six. That 2005 yes. uh, Act of, uh, by, by UNESCO, yes. which talks about human rights and, uh, and the bio, bioethics. Bioethics, yes. All right? Now yes. the question again is this. This uh, national control of disease, whatever, are they part of this decision making? Uh, were, they, were they yes. consulted? We're going to come to that see, in the course of the, are, of the program. These are yes. all the issues right. that we need to look at. As a matter of fact, he, uh, as Dr. Miller is there, is now even allowing a lot of rumor to go around as regards this passage of bill. All right. That is so, not what we need uh, just, now. Just, just, we're just, not just about, thoughts now. We're, we're going not, to come to that, sorry, Dr. We're not Dr. talking Dyer. about. Yes. We are not talking about how to come up with our own uh, 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 vaccines. vaccines. Yeah. Your thoughts, you just, just on your thoughts. Just on your thoughts. Now, Dr. Williams, at its 32nd session in October 2003, the, the General Conference considered that it was opportune and desirable to set universal, universal laws around um, standards in the field of bioethics with due regard for human yeah. dignity and human rights and also freedoms in the spirit of cultural yeah. pluralism yeah. inherent in bioethics. And also, the declaration yeah. was adopted by the UNESCO's General Conference on October 19, 2005, like you rightly did state, and it supports the doctrine of informed consent being an element of global yeah. medical ethics and bioethics. Now, the need for public hearing is paramount. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, uh, we need to have a public hearing because a public hearing will give you the human consent and your fundamental human rights would have been defended. Uh, uh, has this been done? No. Clearly, Bill Gates and the Speaker of the House, in tandem, have trampled on the human rights of Nigerians and also uh, Africans and the world at large. Absolutely. Because we are signatories to uh, UNESCO Article 6, which protects human rights, fundamental rights, 
and the right of consent. So are you going to tell me that we have no right of consent to be able to say we do not want this vaccine? And as Dio rightfully said, we should be concentrating on pumping money into finding our own cure, like Madagascar has done. It is time we look inwards. We have too many brilliant, brilliant uh, medical professionals and also traditional medal uh, 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 faculty people who can come up with solutions. And I dare say, I think we do have, I, I think, a, a company, Event 6 or something like that, who've already come up with a, a cure for uh, COVID-19, which is say is just a normal viral infection like influenza. So why this panic and pandemic that has been created, destroying lives, destroying uh, people's uh, economic uh, welfare, uh, and then on top of that, you come and trample on our human rights and our right to consent to push through a very draconian uh, bill that says, you know, eventually you can uh, be uh, uh, asked to have that vaccine or you don't exist. You can't travel, you can't do banking, you can't do so many things. So in other words, you're just uh, another uh, robotic slave. No, Nigerians and Africans have a right to stand up and say, no, this cannot happen. We are going to defend our human rights. I mean, it, it, it beggars the question, who is the Speaker of the House? You know, uh, Bolaji Akinyemi, the former minister had said, and he quoted it in the newspapers on Sunday, that the speaker has had, you know, um, <laughs> uh, acts of dishonesty uh, in his lifetime. And this is a dishonest act. And it is, because if you try to sneak a bill in that has not been argued, that has not had public hearing, that has not had the key uh, uh, stakeholders, the NCDC participating or even instigating that bill, then it tells you something is wrong somewhere and there is some kind of secret agenda probably paid for. All right, Dr. Dr. Dio, let me come to you now. You say I had a whole lot to say. I mean, the principle of concept was clearly stated in the UNESCO Act. I mean, we're going to butt on that. Why, why you still you continue your thoughts if you remember what it was you were saying earlier? Yeah, you, yeah. See, you see, look at, look at even the contents of that bill. When you receive, when you are being given that vaccine, you'll be given a certificate which qualifies you to do so many things. But when you don't have that certificate, you cannot buy a ticket. You cannot buy a flight. You cannot go to the bank. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. On what basis, for goodness sake? Is this the first time we have viral uh, uh, infections in Nigeria or in Africa? No. Even not in Ebola. It wasn't like this. So why is it that this particular bill, you are now attaching this to that? Now let's come to this. Look at America. This this rem this rem seal uh, uh, drug that they just that they are just trying to push through in America. Are you aware that it's a Nigerian who graduated from the University of Ibadan that is at the center of that drug? That is to tell you how brilliant Nigerians are. Madagascar developed their, 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 their own drugs, of which it will not make you to, to, to have that virus. And again, it will also deal with that virus when you are having it. What have we done? Can we go there and see what, is, what, what they have done and then buy into it because it's Africa? Why can't we go and learn from uh, Senegal? Why can't we go and learn from, uh, from uh, Ghana? That's why the father, even our universities, University of Ado came up with a particular drug, but have they gone there to find out? So why are we now talking about this? Instead of us pushing our resources there, why can't we push our resources to whereby we'll be able to fulfill what UNESCO Act of 2005 had discussed? Now, um, Mr. Wallace, it also stipulates that any preventive diagnostic and therapeutic medical intervention is only to be conducted with free and informed consent of the persons concerned based on the adequate information. Now, the underscored word here is consent still. What is the, yes. house, what yeah. is the house of representative not paying attention to when it comes to the, UNESCO, the UNESCO's act in relation to this, to this bill? They are turning a blind eye. It is obvious, pretty obvious that they're turning a blind eye. You cannot ramrod down the throat 
of Nigerians or Africans a bill that they have had no consent to and have not participated in. That is draconian, that is uh, militaristic, and that, that is not democratic, nor afrocratic, I would say. Um, it is clear that the consent of all concerned has not taken into account their participation. And if that is the way that this Speaker of the House and the House of Rep wants to go, they should be fired. They should all be fired and new representatives go there to represent uh, the people truly, because they are not representing the people. The people are saying, we want consent. Uh, we should have consent to this. And they are they're telling you, withdraw the bill or discuss it. You understand? That must be. I don't think there's a need or a hurry to go into rushing the bill where we should be doing some research. You know, every time that we've had vaccines in Africa, whether it was Ebola or it was HIV, uh, as you very well know, they were poisonous and they were, uh, they were done purposefully to depopulate uh, the African continent. Uh, that, 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 that has been proven. And in the meantime, you know, why doesn't Bill Gates and the others try those vaccines that they are talking about on themselves and in their own country? Why is it Africa? It tells you again something's wrong and they have found worthy participants who I, I, I find is treacherous. It's an act of treachery and treason to have uh, participants in, in Africa who are following a no consent attitude to Africans. It cannot go on. Now let's consider some of, some of the parts of this bill, what, what, what the article has in this bill, what is contained in this bill. Part four of the bill, also known as the NCDC bill, article 46 to 49, entitled vaccination and other prophylaxis, seeks to compel Nigerians to embrace vaccination and other prophylaxis in contradiction to the article six of the UNESCO Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights. I beg to ask again, Dr. Dayo, are they ignorant of this UNESCO's declaration? It's not that they are ignorant. They know what they are doing. And that's why I exactly. said a lot of time that it's all about conspiracy theory. They know exactly what they are doing. They must have, they must have gone through the declaration of, of, of uh, Article, Article 15, six. I mean six. Article 6, six. Of, of, of UNESCO. Yeah. They must have gone through it. But they, just, they were just thinking that this is something that they can pass through the back door without people knowing. Remember that even when they were passing that, when, when they are passing the first, first reading and second reading, it was then that somebody just stood up in the house. I said, look, guys, you cannot do this. That he is not, he is not going to be part of it. And then we read in the news that there was rowdiness in the house. So it's not that they are not aware. My brother, look at it. Can anybody, can anybody force you as an individual to do what you don't intend to do. You are an adult. As an adult, you don't force anything on, 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 some, on, on people, especially when it, when, it, when it has to do with human rights. Because I have my own right to say, okay, I want to use this, uh, I, want to, I want to take this uh, vaccine. And most especially, we have been saying, if you want to test your vaccine, first of all, test it on yourself and test it on your people. Before coming to Africa, let me tell you, they have seen that Africa is becoming of age. And they have seen that Africa is going to be the ruler of the world very, very soon. And they don't want it. They don't want it. And that's why they are now looking at ways and manners in which they can depopulate Africa. And then remove whatever they think it is essential for our developmental progress in, 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 in Africa. Imagine bringing such a vaccine to us that had been poisoned. Putting it on our people, injecting our people with it. And then you can imagine, you can imagine the whole or the proportion of our population that, that, that will have been uh, killed uh, well, through Mr. such. Mr. Williams, Article 47 also says the power to order certain persons to undergo vaccination or other prophylaxis rests with the Director General of the NCDC who may order any person or class of persons not protected or vaccinated against the disease to forcefully undergo vaccination or under prophylaxis within such period as may be specified in the order. Let's contemplate this for a moment. Right. Well, there are two things there. Um, 
that means it's selective. Yeah. And if it's selective, could it be that part of the agenda is ethnic cleansing? I don't know which side of the divide uh, anyone would be, but could it be that it is uh, participating in an ethnic cleansing within the country? Could it be ethnic cleansing uh, uh, um, uh, at a certain part of the country? You have to look at these things. That's, the, that, that's one side of the, uh, of the coin. Uh, the other side of the coin, to say that um, you, know, uh, you will force certain people to have it. it. It means that you are also going to target, um, from a selection point of view, um, certain people. Could it be uh, the poor uh, villagers and uh, those who are less inclined to challenge? You know, uh, what are we talking about here? You cannot. And the NC, the other part of it is that the NCDC, saying you are empowering the NCDC. Did the NCDC request this uh, particular uh, aspect of the bill, did they uh, contribute to it? Did they say this is what they would like to do? They have had no say. So how can you, how can you in that article of that bill uh, assume, and you're touting NCDC as though you are part and parcel of NCDC. NCDC did not go to the House of Rep and make a, 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 a pronouncement that this is what they would like to do and have it uh, discussed. It wasn't. Right, but you right. now appropriate yeah. to the NCDC that this is what they would do. As though they said yeah. this is what they would like to do. They never said that. They didn't participate. They didn't instigate. So therefore, it's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Now, the Christian Association of Nigeria can has challenged the Speaker and House of Reps that they are prepared to go to court and repeal any further attempt at passing this bill. Do, do you think there's a haste in wanting to pass this bill, Dr. Dio? Let me, let me, let me take yours first, then I'll come to William. Do you think there's a haste in trying to pass this bill? And what Khan has said rightly? Sure. There have been an haste in passing this bill. You just, you, you came to the House, introduced the bill, you never, you never even given those papers out for them to first of all go and look at it over a period of time before they come around and argue on it. Do you, which, which is which is what it's supposed to be. And then pram first reading, pram second reading. Is that not haste? So why are you in the east? And can, can, in his own wisdom, had seen it as a group of people that are also under that will be under this particular uh, law if passed. Said, look, you can't do this. So it's better for you to drop it, or else we charge you to cut. All right. Quickly, um, Mr. Williams, before we let you go this evening, the NCDC said they were not consulted, nor participatory in its formulation. Now, again, this comes up like it's fueling the conspiracy theory, making the, the speaker's defense hollow and suspicious indeed. Your quick reactions to this. Well, they, they have said it, and if the NCDC can say that, the entire country <laughs> has to feel the same way as well, too. Um, there is a conspiracy theory. Uh, has it been bought? Has it been paid, as is being suggested in social media? Why are you rushing this without the stakeholders? Something is wrong somewhere, and it has to be addressed. And I think, like they are asking for... Uh, investigation of Bill and Melinda Gates. I think more investigation should be done on that Speaker of the House, who actually uh, uh, is the person that actually put the bill forward and then got his uh, cohorts to come along with him until he was stopped by other members of the House of Rep and, uh, and, and can now. And can, uh, I think, is doing a good job to say that they are going to court and get it repealed, and that's the right to do so. All right, Mr. Williams Wireless, it's been a pleasure having you join us on Plus Politics and for your insightful contribution. Thank you. And quickly, Dr. Dr. Dyer, I'll take, I'll take your last thoughts on this. I mean, here is the NCDC. Who should be a major stakeholder in this? Coming out and say, you know what, they are not, they are not participatory to this, to this decision. What does that say here? What he's saying here is that there is a, there is a systemic problem in this country. Imagine, even look at, look at when those uh, 15 or 16 Chinese doctors were brought into the country. The same thing the health minister said, that he was not aware. All right? So who authorized it? Now, this one again, that has to even do with a particular parasita, which is NCDC. Yes. You were passing a bill. You, you did not even go to them to ask for their input in it. You not even asked them to come to the 
a floor of the house to come and make submission as regards uh, as regards this particular bill, which needs some touch of professionalism. You didn't ask them. So on what basis are you now hinging? Well, he has or, said there will be a public hearing today, though. Uh, he said what? He said he has promised there will be a public hearing. No, yeah. public hearing, no public hearing. They have made up their mind. All, all we need to do now is to stop there immediately. Right. They have made up their mind. Dr. If, if Dyer, don't stand up, Kyle man. Day, a political technocrat, thank you very much for your contribution in this thank segment, you. and you're still with us for the next. And thank you for staying with us. The Senate has called for the decentralization of the Nigerian police force. This is up next for discussion. We'll be right back.